Okay, Luke, I think it's time that we do another one of the reactions to fine tuning. Yep. So, you know, these we discussed in our book, mm -hmm. uh, A Fortunate Universe. Uh, available from all good booksellers and adding paperback soon. Oh, and adding paperback, yes. Yeah, yeah. So if you've already got the hardback, buy the paperback yeah, as, yeah, well, as well. Right? Yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, You'll okay. find some corrected typos. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so the reaction is uh, essentially: How could the universe be fine-tuned for life when we don't really know what life is anyway? How do we define life? Right, so actually this is quite a pickle. You, you use words like this and then you go to the biologists and you say, what's life? And they go, ah, well. Um, so there's a long sort of discussion about this. So uh, on one level, you've got people asking, like obviously biological things like viruses, are they life? Because they, they have to have a host. You can't have a virus which just you know, floats free on its own. Certainly it can't reproduce. It needs, so in particular, viruses need living cells to reproduce themselves. So if it can't reproduce itself, is it really a life form? Um, on the other end, you have people asking questions like, uh, you know, clouds have complex, um, you know, laws that that they, you know, are, are governed by. Are they life forms? Are computers life forms? Actually, it wouldn't it be lovely if clouds were alive? <laughs> I think that'd be great. Well... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's another topic of another video. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so you have, you know, you know, it looks like life is chaotic. You know, there's the sort of well, my life is. Yeah, certainly all <laughs> our life and clouds are chaotic. So, so maybe that that holds. Um, it it seems like for most, you know, every time the problem is every time you try and nail down a definition, there are always these sort of edge, what are called edge cases, the things that that didn't either did make the cut which make you think oh and or, or didn't make the cut and you think oh maybe they should be in so you might think um that the ability to undergo darwinian evolution or some form of evolution uh that would be a characteristic of life um but then you know if an alien turns up and you know they they, they you know there's some other biological process we haven't thought of which which produced them and it's not darwinian evolution you know, maybe that's possible. But they can still talk to us and chat and reproduce and, and all that sort of stuff. It seems like we should call that life. So that that seems to be a bit narrow. And you think, okay, anything that can sort of react to its environment, you know, to information in its environment in some way. But then, you know, a, a, you know, a, a rock gets blown along by the wind. Oh, that doesn't seem like life. Yeah. So there is, there is a real conundrum here about you know, you know, we can't actually define that word. So how can we say fine-tuned for life? So, so uh, th this is, of course, not a new question. We're not the first people to deal with this. And mm -hmm. um, I actually uh, I recommend that the viewers check out a book by a, a great physicist, actually, um, uh, Erwin, Erwin. Erwin Schrodinger, uh, called What is Life? Mm. And actually, some people may not know that he actually spent a lot of his academic career at the university in Dublin, Right. And so he spent a lot of time in Ireland and he wrote this book whilst uh, uh, he was there. And he, he pondered the question, in terms of uh, physical law, mm. what is life? Mm. And what he sort of came to the conclusion is that life had something to do with information and information processing. Yeah. Right? So that was his basic idea. Yeah. And, and again, like that seems to capture a lot of what's going on. So life, you know, a rock isn't reacting to the, the rain. It just gets wet. Whereas, say, a rabbit feels the rain and thinks, I don't want to get wet in some sense. And so runs into its burrow or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, this, it, it, it then comes around to, okay, how, how do you get a physical system to... Uh, process information and on general terms you need something but there's something about entropy going on there uh -huh. so there's this idea that not you know not all forms of energy are created equal so um, um, there are certain forms of energy which are more useful where it's easier to transform them into another form and there are some forms of energy which are less useful where it's very difficult to transform them into another form so for example um, the reason why we all use batteries is is because the energy stored in there is ready to go just connect two wires and that chemical energy is ready to be turned into electrical energy. Um, the reason why, you know, if I used a battery to, to run a heater and then put the heat into this room, 
the reason that's a fairly useless form of energy is there's no simple device I can use to get the energy back out of the room and back into the battery. Um, and so wherever you've got a process like that which works in one direction of time but and, and is not immediately sort of erased by the reverse direction, you've got a you've got time's arrow, so you've got an entropy uh, arrow of time going on there, some form of energy is becoming more useless. And so if you've got something which is recording information, but that information is not immediately being erased, there must be something to do with entropy there. Something, some record is being laid down and not being erased. And so there's some connection there between information processing, life, and the second law, um, which, which I think is what, what Schrodinger was, was going on about as well. And, and so I think if you read Schrodinger's book, he was trying to guess how uh, information is stored in, in living creatures, right? And, yeah. and he, um, he realized that uh, you can't do it with simplicity, yeah. Right. You need to have uh, complexity to store information. So if you have a crystal that has mm -hmm. the same repeating structure over and over again, then there's only really one piece of information that's stored there. And yeah. that's that's the basic unit of what that crystal is. But if you can have a substance which has two basic units and then you can order them differently, yeah. then you can start to store information yeah. in the order and that's effectively what we've got in our dna of course what we've got is four yeah. ba base units but the important thing is not what the units are but the order in which they appear and um, our entire biological process you know when we um, take a look at inside cells and what cells do with dna mm. right they they read the dna tape they interpret that message and they use that then to create amino acids and then proteins etc so it is all about information processing mm. but as you say that, that to do that to process information you need to have a flow of energy mm -hmm. but we also need to counter entropy yeah. in the sense that we need to maintain ourselves yeah right so so life seems to be wrapped up in this uh processing of information flow of energy mm. and basically countering the actions of entropy basically keeping us as uh as a living being and preventing us from decaying right so getting back to the question which was how can you talk about fine tuning if we don't have a good definition of life that i think the key is it, it's not the case that there's nothing we can say about life like of course there is we you know we have this conversation and people who know a lot more about life than us and can go back and forwards on this there are some tough edge cases but it's never the case in fine tuning when we want to say, okay, that universe, if I did this, that universe, there's no way there's life over there. It's not the case that we're on either side of a, an edge case. It's not the case that I look in that universe, oh, uh, you know, they won't have viruses, but they will have um, iPods. Or, you know, they will have iPods, but they won't have viruses. Or, you know, they'll, they'll have rabbits, but they won't have, you know, you know sentient clouds or something. Um, the edge cases, the ones that make the definition difficult, the line that d divides those is not the line, the, the, a line that's nowhere near any of these fine tuning cases. So we focus on the really, the most basic things about a universe like, is there an arrow of time? Is there this use, is there any useful form of energy at all that, that anything could use? Is there any form of of this the complexity which you need there so you're talking about okay i've got to have a basic unit so there's got to be a way stuff can stick together but i've got it there's got to be more than one way that things can stick together so that i could i could pile these units up in different ways i can write out a binary you know message in you know, zeros and ones in, in these different things and so there had better be useful forms of energy and you know some way for things to stick together in a complex order and so, for example, uh, the kind of change which totally annihilates the periodic table. Uh, if, there's n if there's nothing else in that universe which gives things a way to stick together, and because we specify the physics, we know whether there is. You know, we've just got to do our job properly. Um, if there's no other way to stick things together in any sort of stable and yet manipulatable order, then there's no way to, in, in the most basic way, to write out any sort of information, any sort of message. So the conclusion then is, is that um, 
we don't really need a super robust definition of what life is mm -hmm. because if we go on this very general characteristic as it, of requiring energy flow, uh, information processing, yeah. and basically fighting uh, decay, yeah. right? fighting entropy, then that's a sufficient definition for us to basically lump universes into can have complexity here, yeah. can't have complexity there. Yeah. And that's what we mean when we talk about fine-tuning.